You love the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 I love the black rag of the Lord for what he's done. And I know what he's going to do because I've read the book, Brother Ben. Amen. Amen. If you got your Bible, start over the book of Exodus, chapter 25. I've asked Brother Bill to stand and read from verse 10 to verse 15. The Ark of the Covenant. And they shall make an ark of shittle wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittle wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, and that the ark may be born with thee. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we love you. Thank you for the reading of your words, precious Lord. Father, these that's on our prayers this morning, you know their needs. Lord, and I ask you to meet those needs this day too according to your will, Lord. You said, I asked, and you shall receive. We have asked, Lord. And I believe that they're going to receive, Lord. Father, I ask, too, for that anointing upon me this morning. I'm asking you to give me the words to preach and teach this morning, God. When we leave here, we can say that it's good to be in your house. Lord, I love you. All those 
those that's not here this morning, Lord, you know the reason. I ask you to be with them in a very special way, Lord. Be with those that's lost loved ones. Comfort them, Lord, and lift them up at this time. Father, these things I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This morning here in this, we see that what God is doing, we can back up before it all in there and you see more of this. God has gave him this, and that's what he's doing here. He has gave him this commandment to build this. But the people can't realize to on back as they come out of Egypt how God brought them out. God brought them out with a cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire at night. And when he gave them this, Sister Pat, and built this to put into the temple, in, into this place, tabernacle, he said, I'll come down over that. He, He's coming down and sort of overshadowing it. And the people will know that he is with them. From place to place that they go, when they get ready to move, the cloud would start out. They'd have to gather up and start moving. And when he got to a place where he stood still, they would set the tabernacle back up and God would sort of hover over it. And as they went into it once a year to make an atonement for their sins, they had to wait one year and only the high priest could go in there. Nobody else could. And God would come down and meet their needs, fill their desires. You know, and that's what they was doing, going through the wilderness. From time to time, they would approach it and bring their offering to the high priest. And he would sprinkle the blood on there and he just sort of laid their sins by for another year. So they got to depending up on the box. Everywhere they went, Brother Bill, they was thinking that God's in the box. But brothers and sisters, today we know that God is not in the box. That's right. He couldn't fit in a box if he was to build one. Because he's bigger than the whole universe. That's right. But some people think that God is in a box. He's not in a box. Some of them think, well, I can come to church. And Brother Bill ought to put more boxes around the about. Brian asked me yesterday, what's in boxes down there? I said, you'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> but Sister Calvin, the boxes are here. And this is the way most of us want to come to church. To worship God. He's in a box. And not only that, you see where the box is at? They left it there last Sunday. That's right. What did they do during the week? Where was their God at? They left it at the church. He's in the box down there. Well, you know what? A lot of times, I always want them little jack in the box. Y'all remember him? Yeah. Boy, you would just turn it and then he'd jump out. <laughs> well, that'd have to do. I got the bank in my head yesterday. I said, that'd do it. <laughs> Y'all seen how he jumps? That's just the way that they wanted God to work. I get ready for him, I'll just crank him up. And they'll hear a little bit of music and get the feeling good. And then when they get ready to leave, they box it up and they leave it here. 
Let me tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. We can't leave God here. He's here this morning. He's here. But he ain't in that box. The only box that he's in is in our heart. Amen. If you are a child of God this morning, he's in your heart. And when I walk out that door, God walks out that door too. He ain't in this building. But he's in here this morning. He's in here right now, Sister Kelly. He's with us. Boy, when things seem like he's getting, there ain't no way out. It gets dark. You know why? The devil is hard on your trail. He's after you. Because the devil ain't got you. He wants to get you. You're doing something good for God, and he don't like it. He's jealous. But he's he been after me lately. He's giving me that old junk and around, keeping me at home. But there's one thing he ain't done. He ain't stopped me from praising God. I know who to praise. I keep telling him, Sister Carol, I know who holds the end. I know who has the future in his hand. It's my God. I'm following Jesus Christ. There'll be some dark days, but thank God he sent his son. He came down and went to the cross that you and I could be lifted up and make it to heaven one day. That's who my trust is. I'm trusting in him. And I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Somebody read Luke 7 and 15. Luke 7, 11 through 15. I'm wrong. Uh, give me a minute to get my eye. It says, and it came to that Luke 7? Yes, <laughs> 11 through 15. Go ahead, Brother Cecil. <laughs> it says, and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of the disciples went with him and attack people. No, look at people. My eyes are watered. Hold on. Let me start over. He said, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And when he came and touched the bier, and then they that buried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And that he was that dead, sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Amen. The verse there that I wanted you to really pay attention to did he touch the casket? He did not touch the dead man in the casket. He touched the casket. There's a lot of times we hold in our boxes and we got something hid in the boxes, stored away in that box that Jesus needs to touch. He touched the casket. And it was what was in the box that needed taken care of. So a lot of times we come to church and bring our boxes, we don't give the Lord a chance to touch the box. Like to say we want to wind it up and let him jump out, we'll get a blessing today and then leave. And leave our box second him. But Jesus touched the 
casket that day and what was in the casket come alive. And he spoke to him and he gave it back to his mother. That was her only child that was living. She was a widow, didn't have no one else to provide for her. And now he had compassion on her and gave her her child back. Tell me that God don't have compassion on us. I thank him from day to day the compassion and the full of grace that he is. I'm glad he had blood in it, Brother Bill, the day that he, he saved me because I needed all the grace I could get. But Jesus never run out. That's sort of right. like the lady with the oil. And she poured it into another job. The oil never ceased in it. God's mercy and grace never ceases. It's always there. He's got an abundance, sir. Just like the song said, the ground level at the cross, there's always room. One more. That's the reason Jesus stands with his arms wide open. He said, come on, come to me. There's room for one more. And I'm glad that day that he said, come on to me. There's room for one more. Here's your one, Bill. Read Mark 14 and 3. Mark 14, what? Three. three. Mark 14, verse 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and spiked in very precious. Amen. There's another one. You see, what was in the box was very precious. But you see what she did? She broke the box <clears throat> because there was a very special reason. She was sitting at Jesus' feet and anointed him. There's a lot of times we took the things around on the box that we need to break and get rid of. Because the Lord don't want us to have it. Why was this so precious? This ointment smelled good. I mean sweet smell. You know, my thought run through my mind. You women understand. It smelled real good. This woman was a prostitute. She put this perfume on her to make her smell good. And as she walks through town, the Bible, if you read it, the men There was something that she had that she had to get rid of. So she taken the best that she had, all that she had, and the Bible says she broke it and poured it on Jesus' feet. Ain't Jesus worth the very best that we got today? Amen. What can we give him today? It would be our very best. It's ourselves. And that's what she done. She sat down there at Jesus' feet and poured her heart out to Jesus. No more did she have anything in a box. From that day forward, 
she told him Jesus, her rival, in her heart. Today, we need to tote Jesus around in our hearts. I made this remark, look at this morning, sister, or we, anyhow, if you tell someone you love them, they want to see a reaction of it. And you see, and that's what Jesus wants. Not me just say, I love you. I love you. He wants to see some results out of it. You women would be drunk, jealous if your husband just said, I love you, and never brought you any roses or anything. Y'all would feel bad. Jesus, think about him. A lot of times we come to church and we just do lip service, Sister Carol. Lip service. Jesus wants more than that. He wants us to demonstrate how much we love him. You out in Walmart, you on the street, everywhere you go. As I've said a many times, and still I'll say it again. Me and Brother Bill, he's an elf and then we go fishing. Some or another. We're going to mention the Lord before we get back. To somebody. Can't you hear Jesus, Brother Bill? Just like that day over yonder the river. Jesus said, Father, that's our children down there. Ain't they doing good? Ain't they doing good? You see, Jesus will brag on us, but we got to brag on him. So if you got something in the box, Leave it up here and take Jesus home when we get in the heart. We'll get Brother Cecil to carry the box inside. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you love him? Tell him the day you love him. Tell him before you leave if you love him. Brother Bill. Would you take